one of the first generations to be raised with the internet. One of the first in our childhood to utilize the expansive network, the information, and cat videos that is the World Wide Web. Unlike older generations, we don't differentiate our internet lives from our regular lives. We meet, talk, and interact in real life, and continue to do so online. We are praised for possessing the knowledge on operating technology to access the net, yet many people don't understand the fundamental concepts that come with such a considerable medium of information, and how the basic freedoms that come with it are improved. Propagation of the term cloud, along with oversimplified notions about the internet, would lead you to believe a picture of the internet like this. Though in reality, the internet is a complex network of networks, a slice of which looks like so. All devices connected to the internet are assigned a unique address, consisting of four numbers from 0 to 255. These are called internet protocol addresses, or IP addresses. When you type a worded address, such as www.google.com, it is translated by DNS servers to a number domain, which your computer then connects to. Information travels from your computer, through your modem, through copper cables, to your internet service provider, who can monitor your usage and bill you. Finally, these ISPs connect to larger network access points, which may use undersea cables to connect you around the world. So how does this relate to keeping the internet open? You may have heard the term metadata been thrown around recently on the news and online. The federal government has of late introduced a mandatory data retention regime, which would allow the government to retain metadata on all communications into and out of Australia, namely telephone and internet usage. But just what is metadata? Essentially, metadata is data about data. In the case of a phone call, this may involve your telephone number, the time of the call, the duration of the call, and the location of the parties making the call, rather than the contents of the call itself. This may seem straightforward at first, but when defining metadata in relation to the internet, the legislation has been vague. Legally, there remains no definition for metadata within the proposed legislation, which would permit the government access to indefinite types of metadata as technology progresses such as the IP addresses of users connected to the internet, chat site aliases, and email addresses of those connected to the internet. It is this ambiguity that has people alarmed, and for a good reason. Why should I be concerned? Surely only terrorists should be worried, I hear you ask. Alarmingly, the Tony Abbott government has willingly admitted that metadata retention will be used for general policing, with institutions such as Medicare, the RSPCA, Australia Post, Australian Security and Intelligence Organization, and the Federal, State, and Territory Police, freely having access to your metadata without the need of a warrant, which would otherwise grant authorization. The government argues that since metadata does not directly reveal personal information, that it shouldn't require a warrant, as this can slow down the system. Though in reality, while individual components of metadata may not be directly revealing, when collated, the digital footprint that is revealed can be strongly indicated of private information. What many people don't realize is that Australian law enforcement agencies already have access to metadata without the need of a warrant, provided that internet service providers and telecommunication companies, such as Telstra, willingly retain the data that was requested, which is not required under the current legislation. Following the highly likely passing of the bill, companies like Telstra will be required under law to retain metadata on their consumers for up to two years, which would allow previously mentioned institutions to access this without the need of a warrant. It is naive to think that policing institutions and their overseers are infallible. Police powers have always been exploited, arguably by a minority, but abuse of powers has always occurred. An incident occurred regarding metadata in Queensland when Queensland police officials and last year began to access private metadata of cadets to determine whether they were faking sick days involved in sexual relations and involving sexual relations with each other. Such access is disturbing to say the least and is clearly a violation of our privacy. While we, as a younger generation, may not have a direct impact on political affairs, it is imperative that we bring attention to issues like this. As we progress as a society, it is of utmost significance to ensure that the internet remains a utility in the hands of the people and not in the hands of the government. It is important to ensure that our basic rights of privacy are secure. Thank you.